Hey everybody, it's Matt Fury and we are here in beautiful Los Angeles, California. It's arguably the media capital of the world. We are here to talk about Media Composer 5.0. Now if you went to NAB or saw any of our clips on YouTube, you've heard what Avid has to say about the next generation of Avid's flagship editing system. But today you're going to hear from actual customers and beta testers to get their take on MC5. Let's check it out. There's a perception that Media Composer isn't the most open system out there. Based on what you've seen in Media Composer 5, is that true? Media Composer has definitely made large strides towards working well with others. You know, mostly this ProRes thing is just, that's hands down a message that we're working well with others. Avid is basically giving us new tools every six months now. Media Composer is opening to these other media formats through AMA. I can get it to tape just as reliably. The key takeaway for us was AMA. Just the ability to edit on the set while we were still in production. We had someone on set with their Mac with Media Composer and they were literally taking the P2 and putting it directly into the system and it just eliminated one whole step of digitizing. It pretty much covers the whole range of stuff that I run into. I run into RED, I run into ABC HD, I run into P2, XCAM more and more, Canon 5D, 7D, and all flavors of QuickTimes. Are you seeing a lot of projects coming in uh, that are RED based? There are. There are a lot of people who are calling us up at, telling us that they're going to be shooting in RED. I did a music video on RED. It was a one day shoot, wasn't a ton of footage, but it took me the weekend to put everything through the tool to get it ready to bring in. It eliminates the need for third party products, third party software, hardware. It's going to make everything a lot smoother. The beauty of AMA is that it's very future oriented. The idea that someone can hand you RED files or QuickTime files or whatever, and you can just preview them and you can just edit with them right then and there is just, it's a real milestone. If I had access to being able to edit this batch from the full red files, it would be amazing. It was nice to pick a camera based on just what I needed for the production, for the artistic side of things. I think that this has completely changed the way they can interact with the material. They don't have to transcode anything now. They can mix frame rates and formats. I think this has been a really exciting period in the history of the company. If you're using the smart tool, I feel like you have a whole lot more control over it. I'm just going to throw stuff down and start manipulating and see what we're going to make. It's like you feel it more in your hands. Your tool self-selects depending on the position of the cursor. It knows what you want to do. So rather than having to go click a button, mm -hmm. perform an operation, and go back, it can all happen fluidly while you're editing. I would use this tons. You would I mean, <laughs> tons. The direct manipulation tools, they're the biggest change Avid has made in years. It lowers the learning curve. It makes the Media Composer more standardized. And I think it does it in a way that's slicker than the competition. Borrowed some really cool stuff from Pro Tools, and that now in each track, I second up to five real-time Odyssey plugins on each track. Oh, wow. I never let a director of mine see anything that hasn't been worked. And that's what we teach you, that you want to present that like the movie that it's really going to be. Really what you want to do is give the sound department the best or closest approximation to what it is artistically you had in mind. I really, really love the new sound panel tools where that I can see a waveform just on a one particular track. Also with the Artest plugins, you can really create some track level effects that help the storytelling. We do a lot of promotion and publicity, and that's loud. Everything has to be loud and clear, you know, very narrow dynamic range. And to be able to do compression, limiting, noise reduction, DSing in, right in Media Composer in real time is pretty cool. Whether it be on set or whether it be editors who um, are obviously spending 12 or 14 hours a day and want to be able to take some work home. A little box you can throw in your bag like that is a cool thing. Now, you know, if you use something like the Matrox MXO uh, Mini, you can uh, use a regular TV and color calibrate it using the calibration tools in there. We want a real monitor, and that's what Matrox, the Matrox port for 450 bucks does. Your project is going to look nice and you're going to save a lot of money. It seems like Avid is, is definitely listening to their client base and coming out with new revisions faster and better, and uh, it, it, it helps with the workflow for our clients. They can offline with the Avid Media Composer. They can move on to Final Color, to outputting 444 with the Symphony Nitrous. It's a solid machine. You, you know, the, It's predictable, it's, it's logical, it, it's intuitive for, for a film editor, so that when I want to make trims, it, does, it, it operates as expected. You know, Things don't go out of sync. I, I mean, it's just, it's just solid. Avid has changed very dramatically. The software is, is being aggressively upgraded. There's a lot more attention being paid to what editors need day to day. They say, what do you want? 
how can we make this product better for you? And I was always kind of an avid loyalist, but it's made me more so. A lot of the things that have been added here make it a much more viable solution in terms of like, give it to me, I'm gonna start cutting it together right now. You have to go back 15 years to see this much development, this much excitement, and this much change in such a short period of time.